If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Mind Pump. Well, for the first 43 minutes, we didn't talk a lot about fitness, but we did our introductory conversation. We start out by talking about the competitive spirit. Nature or nurture? Is this something you're born with or something that is trained within you? Maybe it's Maybelline. Then we talk about board games. These guys love board games. We talk about our favorite ones. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mentioned Organifi Pure. Uh, this is the new Organifi Nootropic supplement that I'm absolutely loving. It's brand new. I think they hit it out of the park. Uh, we are sponsored by Organifi. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump, use the code Mind Pump, you will get a discount. Pure. Then we give out a shout out to our good friend, Erica Fitlove. Her real name is Erica Lugo, but she's on uh, social media as Erica Fitlug. She's uh, going through some tough times, so please make sure you pay her a visit and tell her you're sending your prayers yeah, and thoughts her with love. her. Absolutely. Then we talk about the Mind Pump Thanksgiving uh, vlog that we did on YouTube. You got to check that out. We all had a great dinner, and then we all laughed at how we all wear the same clothes. We're all wearing yeah. Viore, and this is because Viore is freaking awesome. Of course, Viore is one of our sponsors. If you go to Viore Clothing, let me spell that for you, V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 25% off. Then I talk about my daughter's acting career. She was in the play last night at school. Got me all teared up. It's pretty She's awesome. She's a little thespian. And uh, Justin's a little upset because now Starbucks will be blocking porn from their free Wi-Fi. Where am I supposed to go? Kind of sucks. Uh, I mentioned a an awesome series on Netflix I think everybody should check out, especially if you're a foodie. It's called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. It's freaking awesome. And then we talked about the skills that you will need for the future. After that 43-minute intro, we get into the fitness questions. The first question, what question was, why can guys who go to prison build so much muscle, especially when you consider the quality of food, and the fact that they, uh, they, they're they not eating that much. Like, how are they building so much muscle? Is it the training frequency? Like, what's going on? We uncover some of the secrets of prison training. The next question was, this person wants to know why there aren't more lower body exercises in some of the MAPS programs. Uh, that's actually incorrect. There are tons of lower body exercises. They may be perceived that way. Find out how we explain it in that part of this episode. Mm. The next question was, we talk about squatting and deadlifting uh, skills and the techniques needed to do those well. What about the bench press? We break it down. We break down the skills and techniques to bench press the most weight in the most effective way possible. It is a skill. And finally, probably the most important question of all, if we were professional wrestlers, what would our names be and what would our skills be? Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, love this part. all month long, check this out. You ready for this? Enroll in any MAPS program, and you will get one year of free access to our private forum. We love our forum. Great discussions happen on there, fitness and otherwise. It's a wonderful fitness community of Mind Pump listeners, of MAPS program followers. You go on there. You can ask questions. You can contribute. You can talk to other people who are like-minded. That is absolutely free. That's a $97 value. Free if you enroll in any MAPS program. If you want to find out which MAPS program is right for you, just go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. T-shirt time! And it's T-shirt time. Oh, yeah. All right. So because we're recording a little bit early here, we have a very light number of reviews. Oh, you just fucked some people. Ooh. Yeah, well, they'll get it next week. I'll include them with the next round. Good idea, Doug. All right. iTunes winners. Brian in Jersey, 122. We got you, Brian. And that Facebook winners. Taylor, Elise, and Kristen Hammond. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address. We'll get that right out to you. Don't forget, you leave us a review on Facebook we or a review a on iTunes, a five-star review. We will pick the best ones, and you will win a limited edition Mind Pump t-shirt breathed on by Justin himself. That's not so limited. It may get you laid. You know what makes me laugh, Adam? <laughs> Is that... <laughs> Justin was he's such a he's such a competitive kid. Yeah, he knows it doesn't matter. We're joking, but if I say first or you say first, he literally hustles to get on. <laughs> every, time, every time he's like, oh, 
I can't help it. Bro, I, I'm like been conditioned to bro, do that my whole life. He was yeah. so easy to motivate when he worked for me. But I yeah. like this. It's so, that's all I, all I had to do is like put the top guy up on the thing. No. Like, yeah. Oh, I look just here. Literally, that's all he did is highlight the top guy. And he yeah. probably even made one up, you know, after yeah. a while. Oh, look, so, you're you're in second place right now. Yeah. That did pissed you, me off. Yeah. Did you do uh, Did you do announcements like I used to do? No, for I did do that. <laughs> I did, although that's epic, though. That's I used funny. To do that. I remember that, dude. Yeah. Oh. You show me the, 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 the report like every day. Oh, bro. I had I had a guy. Uh-oh. Mine unplugged. Plug now, I had a, a guy that worked for me, uh, you know, my friend Larry, and he's super motivated by competition. Yeah. And so what I would do is, rather than telling him, because he was so good that he used to blow everybody out of the water. Like, he was first place, and then second place was like 10 grand behind him. So it was dumb. Yeah. So what I would do is I'd get the report emailed to me on the computer, and I'd Photoshop so that the second place guy was ahead of him by like a grand or something like that. So he had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Such a dick. That's and then great. I printed out so he was in second place and I'd put it up in the employee room or whatever and yeah. I'd highlight his name, Larry's mm. name, and then I'd put like, you know, our own very own our very own Larry Evans second place in the company. And then I'd make an announcement. Yeah. On the intercom. Like, attention, you know, members and guests, <laughs> please join me in giving an applause to Larry. Second place in Way the company. Way to go, Larry! And the whole, Number two. And of course, the whole gym would applaud, and everybody would be like, oh my God, <laughs> second place in the company. That's so and he's good. he's just shaking his head. Just, <laughs> oh, he'd stop yeah. his workout. Yeah. If he was working out or playing basketball, he'd stop. He'd yeah. come in. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? Oh, he's, yeah, like, uh, he's like, what the fuck? How, did he be, how like is he ahead of me? I don't enraged. get it. Enraged. <laughs> yeah. It took, him, it took him like four months to figure it out, because then what he did was he called... The guy that was beating him every month. <laughs> Just a check. He's like, what are you doing, oh, bro? He called him. And the guy's like, I don't know. Why don't you tell me what you're doing, man? You always crush me. He's like, huh? Yeah. And I got found out. But it worked. <laughs> do you think Do you think that's something that's strategy? Do you think that's something that's, uh, you know, that we we built like in us or is something that we were born with? Like, are you, were you somebody who's, because I know I've got that same thing too. And I, and I wonder, and I always try to look back, like, mm. when did that really start? Like, yeah. when did I become like really competitive? Cause I'm competitive as fuck. Yeah. For me, I, I was always the youngest. Right. So I, I'm, yeah, I, I think that, that, that has a factor for sure. Really? Right. Yeah. yeah. So all my friends were bigger, faster, stronger. And I was the littler guy, you know, growing up because <clears throat> I was a year behind everybody. Cause mm. I started school early. And so I think that naturally forced that in me. Like I was always trying to keep up. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and then once you began to be able to keep up and I was actually rivaling or winning, I think that was what became something that I really enjoyed. I think it's both, it has to be both, right? Genetic and environment. I think there's a strong genetic component, but then there's a, like if you grew up with a lot of, a lot of siblings, you're probably going to be more naturally competitive, I would assume, right? Because there's more siblings. Yeah. Sports probably will in, will probably teach you to be more competitive in the value of, of competition, mm-hmm. how you're raised. But then I look at my dad. Like, my dad is oh, he's ultra. Like, I, like, I'll never forget. This was, uh, I think it was like, it was Christmas one year. Christmas or Thanksgiving one year. And I'm like 14 years old. So I'm already like a teenager, mid-teens. Which my dad is, you know, in his four, he's like a grown man, right? Father of four kids. He's got four kids in the back in his minivan. We had a, uh, what was it, a Ford? What was it? Aerostar. Mini- Aerostar. Yeah, we had one of those two yeah. of that piece of shit. Yeah, so we had a <laughs> <laughs> Ter- <laughs> terrible vehicle. That was the fucking vehicle, right? Yeah, yeah. So we had a Ford Aerostar. Yeah. And his cousin. It's like had- if you could, like, create a car that looked like a wedge for a door. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. That's what it was. And by the way, we had a we had a Ford Aerostar stick shift. Oh wow, you had a stick shift. We oh, actually yeah. had a stick shift. Man, that's long high ass, performance. Long ass stick. Yeah. So my dad had his Ford Aerostar, and then his cousin had a Ford Aerostar also. And he had his three kids in the back, and we pull up to the stoplight and they fucking drag race. <laughs> in the aero, but this was all the time. In the Aerostar. He used to do this shit all the time. And they were just as fast as they could. <laughs> And so my dad, having yeah. the stick shift, it was a little bit faster, and he got a little bit of ahead of him, and then there was some traffic, so my dad just kind of got away. Yeah. Then there was a red light, so my dad you know, hits the brakes of the red light, but his cousin, because he was so eager to fucking compete, because they're all, my, my, my dad grew up with all these cousins, and they're all super competitive. His dad was so eager, I mean, excuse me, his cousin was so eager to compete that he didn't hit the brakes in time, so it's a red light. Mm-hmm. So he hits the brakes, the car locks up, and he slides sideways through the red light. 
and we're just looking at them through the window as they slide through. <laughs> and they go, and then they make it across the other side. So when we get to the house, he just talks shit the whole time to yeah. my dad about how he won. Yeah. Because he went through the red light. He he through. <laughs> and my mom and, and my cousin and his cousin's wife were just so angry like every time yeah so there's something genetic about it too it has to be i think so i think there's uh, there's a genetic component I th- my mom's a fighter i think i get that from her you yeah, know yeah, yeah she's i feel like she's been the underdog for most of her life and she's never given up so i think i've got some of that in me i think competition's a good thing but it can also yeah. poison you yeah oh you absolutely I mean? well, no yeah we i mean there was a lot of games and stuff like so every time we just meet as a family everybody has like a game and we have to like and so it didn't matter what the fuck it was, but like I had to win every single one of those games. And it's still like that. And like Courtney hates it. Like, cause you know, her family like talks and is like nice. And it's like really boring to me, you know, cause <laughs> they sit around and they talk all day. I fucking hate it. Like let's play some games. You know, yeah, let's let, use let, the best. Let's duel it yeah. out. Yeah, no, I'm competitive the with the board games too. Yeah, so like everything, like yeah. you know, ping pong, you know, like darts, whatever the fuck it is. Like, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're just like at it. See, are you now? Are you do you see this in your kids? You know, I see it in my youngest, but I don't really see it in my oldest, which is it's interesting to me. And I I feel like it is like I see a lot of like my wife's personality in my oldest, uh, and she was like that, but she was like would. I mean, she played volleyball and she had like, uh, she was involved in co- like competitive sports, but was never really like, you know, it was all on her terms and, you know, that kind of thing. And I don't know, she was never really like super competitive mm. about it, but that's kind of how he is. He like enjoys it for like the, the game and hanging out, you yeah. know, and I'm like, you can, like, get the ball, fucking win. You yeah. know, like, <laughs> I don't understand. Now, my kids cry if they lose it so and they don't they never win because i never let them so it's like <laughs> well i mean if you're it's gonna a good lesson if no, you're gonna I, cry, I haven't either like if I, you're gonna yeah. cry then this is my this is it if you're gonna cry then you're gonna keep losing because this i'm gonna keep i want you to learn mm-hmm. how to be okay with losing but still be competitive yeah and so we'll play game like we played monopoly the other day and um, kicked our ass, dude. Monopoly, by the yeah. way, that's a game that's oh, frustrating. It's decimating. Oh, that, yeah. that game well, is destroying people's families. lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It breaks, yeah. It does. there's a lot of luck involved in that one. Too. Well, no, I mean, there's a, there's good there's strategy. Like cheating of course, that. there's strategy, but there's, there's a lot the of bank, luck in that too. The person that's like control of the bank, I'm always skeptical. Yeah, oh like, yeah, where the fuck is we, all that? Those hundreds going? Yeah. So we we I was playing with my my son and my daughter, and I made them a bet, and I said, okay, I said if 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 you guys win, if either one of you wins. Then I'll buy you guys the larger size popcorn when we go to the movies later. Because when we go to the movies, they always get mad because they get them the junior. Mm-hmm. They're like, eh, get the bigger size. I'm like, no, you're going to get the junior because that's not good for you. So I said, okay, if you, get, I don't care who wins. You're gonna, and the reason why I did this because I wanted to see if they were able to team up and beat me. Because uh, with Monopoly, you can trade and you know you can do oh, all that. Of course, right? of course. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to see what would happen, right? So as we're playing, and I'm pretty good at that game. I know what the strategy. My son's really good at it too. So we're going, and I'm now I'm starting to like do the psychological warfare. Yeah. So my son's like, he goes to my daughter. He goes, hey, he goes, hey, give me that one, and I'll take this one. And she's like, why? And he's like, well, because then I'll have more of these, and I got a monopoly, and then I can put a hotel or whatever. And I'm like, he just wants to beat you to her. <laughs> she's like, yeah. she's like, no, I'm not gonna do it. And he's like, but it doesn't matter who wins. We could beat, we could beat Papa. And I'm like, listen. I said, I think you're. I think he's trying to trick you into <laughs> winning right now. So then he goes, I'll give you a thousand dollars plus this. And then now she doesn't want to trade at all with him now. Yeah. And I'm cracking up and I'm pitting them against each other. It was the funnest game of all have time. Have you guys? Dude. Have you guys played Ticket to Ride yet? No. No. That was the one that I got uh, Mike Matthews for Christmas last year. We should play that. I you guys would really it, like yeah. that game. In fact, I haven't followed up on it. What is it? It's a. It's a board game. I know, but what? It, like, how does it? How does so it the it's got like it's it's a, a layout of the map of the United States, and it's like all these tra- where train lines would go, mm-hmm. and you have to and each and there's sections like f- to get from one state to the other state, and some are longer than the other, and mm-hmm. the, the strategy you get more points for the longer runs. So if you can go uh, from the east coast all the way to the west coast, you get this you get a ton of points for that, and people can block each other. I can I can. Fuck up you by putting a piece of my, one of my pieces in your mm. in your. Have so, you actually played it? Oh, a lot of times. Really? Uh, yeah, it's a, that's why I bought it for Mike because because remember when we first time hung out with Mike, one of the first times he's like he loves board games. Uh, that was yeah. like one of the things he said. I said, man, I got a game for you. Have you played Ticket to Ride? So it's super strategic. That's cool. One of my very strategic. my favorite new ones, uh, Blockus. 
uh, which is it's kind of like this interesting Tetris kind of you get all these shapes and you're supposed to get rid of all of the shapes that you have like all these pieces and uh, you can literally like block people with like whatever formations you create and all the stuff it's it's pretty intense and <laughs> you could talk a lot of shit as you do it so great. what games are you guys the best at like what games are you like oh I'm this is this is my game hearts mm. hearts rook. My, yeah rook yeah <coughs> you guys play connect four it's a child's game. Connect Four, Courtney I'm destroys at me at I'm that. Und- I undefeated. hate that fucking game. Are you undefeated? undefeated. I got it. I'll Ooh. bring it. Undefeated. I'm going to have Courtney like battle you, dude. She, right, will, she will decimate let's you. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm undefeated. I have no idea what her... Her, I have no idea like how she does it every time. She beats you every time. I took it one time. I took. I was so frustrated. I took it. and I, We were on like a two-story like apartment at the time. And I had played like not just 10 times. It was like 50 times in a row. Because I was like, no, again, again. And she's like, no, I don't want to. This is not funny. But again, <laughs> again. And she just, and she wouldn't like let, like. She's that good. And then huh? she tried to let me win. I'm like, no, you're not letting me win. I know you did that purposely. She's like, yeah. She's like, this is gonna and so I took it and then I threw it off the fucking balcony. You you actually, you actually fucking threw it off the balcony. I took, I was so mad. I took it and I threw it off the balcony. <laughs> and she still married you. And you she know, still married me. You know what one Katrina can't beat me at? And I know she'll deny this because I think she's won one time in a relationship is the what's the the people match one or the the game where you 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 flip up the people do oh, I, right what is that called do i yeah. look like a bitch yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know what you're talking about uh That's, where you're like does he have a mustache yes, yes, yes yeah, yeah. Yeah. i love that game it's a great game it's, it's like a, go it's, fish but with it's people right? it's such yeah. a great game because it's yeah. a game that you could play with like all ages but you could you could also play with adults and it's still uh, a strategic game dude, such, it was right? so Simple funny strategic game right uh we were playing so like i got rid of cable and everything and so like our tv like during I don't know, like when we normally watch TV, like I started playing the Wii with uh, the boys. And so we were playing like this Mario game where you could actually play like three people at the same time going through the levels. And so we're playing together and there's this one move you can do where you like spin and you can grab the person and kind of throw them. And like we figured this out. And so like Ethan thought it'd be funny to grab me and like throw me and like kill me and like throw me down this thing. And I'm like, you son of a. And so I grabbed like the whole rest of the time. Like anytime we were just fucking with each other. The whole rest, like (laughs) we'd never pass anything. We just kept killing each other the whole time. I went and uh, I watched Wreck It Ralph after you guys said that. Oh, yeah. So wasn't it smart? It's really good. They did it. They did it. It was very smart. No, it was really good. Maybe because it's our generation. You know, Mm -hmm. I grew up playing in the arcade. Mm-hmm. The, all those games were familiar to me, and mm-hmm. so and so. There's a lot of references, like you said. I thought it was great. It was well written. I yeah. thought it was hilarious. Good message. So you saw yeah. the first one or the second one? Oh, there's a second one. Yeah, wait the a second minute. One's in the theater. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. You never saw the. You watched only the first one. Yeah. Oh, oh my God! You'll love the second one uh, even more. Really? Yeah. Ra- the second Ralph one breaks the internet. That's yeah, the that, one. that the second one was smarter. Was even smarter than the first. Oh, one. Oh no way! I never even seen the first one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the first one was great. Oh, yeah, okay. Good, All right. No, oh, really yeah, good. Like I didn't know there was a part two. No, no, What no, an no. asshole. Well, I guess yeah. I don't have kids, so I don't pay attention yeah, to that. I'm glad you specified, movie, yeah. because then I, yeah, we wouldn't have known. Yeah. Did you guys ever try the the Organifi Pure packets that they sent us? I didn't, dude. You guys didn't ever try Did they it? send them? I've been waiting yeah, for Yeah, I remember they came in the, the clear yeah, baggies. The, the cocaine bags? <laughs> yeah. You just take them right away, don't you? Yeah. 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 yeah just I just got off the phone, though, with Shauna. Shout out to her. Congratulations. Shauna's back. Ow! Shauna is back with Organifi, which is cool. Oh, she's our rep. She's a homie. Yep, yep. And it's I love cool, her. cool to hear her back. And then congratulations on the on the, the soon-to-be baby. I know. Isn't that yeah. exciting? Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. But I, anyway, I, She's awesome. But too. anyway, they've- they hit it out of the park, dude. Pure's le- it's a it's a legit uh, whatever you want to call it nootropic product. It's actually legit. I I combined it with a little bit of caffeine, mm. and um, they did a good job. Because the problem I've had in the past with other nootropics is they're so stimulant heavy. Yeah, that really it's not a nootropic. It's just the stimulant, which which is different. This I definitely felt sharper and a little bit more fluid with my I guess my speech and my writing so and I've already used it a few times now, now does so. it have all the same stuff like alpha brain or is it different because no, that, no, that was no, all no. that's synthetic right I don't that, like, that's what bothered me well yeah, no alpha brain's stuff. not synthetic but there's uh, there's something in there that you don't <laughs> that you don't like no it it's doesn't, the um the demons came out of me. no what's it called darn it uh 
There's a compound in there that if you take too much of, was it the alpha GPC or is it the? No, is, is it the? I don't. I don't think it was Bacopa. It's the one that makes me sleepy. Maybe Bacopa. Not There's a rhodiola. lot of that in there. No. Ra- no, 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 no. This one, this one. So Pure has the the lion's mane, which I really like. Um, but then they have other things in there that are good for your gut, for gut health. Oh, so this no is why I think like it. this is why I think anything they, that helps your tummy, you like. Well, here's here's why I think anybody will tummy like it. Tummy and brain, because the your gut is very closely connected to how your mind operates. Most of the neurotransmitters that we love to boost, like serotonin and dopamine, are produced in your gut, and they're f- connecting all kinds of mental issues. With gut issues. Yeah. And mental issues can cause gut issues and then vice versa. So they're very smart to give you something that's good for your gut that's also going to help your mind. So anyway, they did they did their homework. They did a very good job. I'm very proud of them. Shout out to so, them. Sweet. Hey, you know who else we should give a shout out to? Who? And give uh, uh, just a, like our, our, our thoughts to? Who? Erica. Oh, Erica Fitlove. Oh, yeah. You guys yeah, saw her story? I'm sorry to hear I just that. I just saw that uh, yeah. stage two thyroid cancer. Yeah. So um, I just want to say to her now, what do you? So what's really what's crazy is that she just she just came out and talked about that on her social media page on Instagram. Um, we absolutely love her. Our heart goes out. She's to such her. a such an absolute sweetheart. Um, but we are having uh, Mike Ruscio in, and he's coming in specifically to discuss thyroid. We get a lot of thyroid questions, mm. and it's an area that I know I'm not well versed yeah. in. I've, it's a, uh, it's yeah. something that I feel like we're still learning a lot about, mm-hmm. um, and there's a lot of unknowns to stuff. Well, there is because you could just off the topic of cancer, you could go, you could have thyroid symptoms of having low thyroid. Go to the doctor, and they find that your thyroid hormones are normal, um, and that may be because you have thyroid antibodies that are preventing you from utilizing thyroid properly. You may have other types of deficiencies or issues, um, and it's it's much more common than people realize now, having it, issues with Now, that. can it be connected to somebody who has uh, HPA dysfunction that you talk about all the time? H- I mean- well, in fact, it's the, the full thing is it's a hypo- so HPA is hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenals, and thyroid. They actually throw thyroid in there as well, but for some reason nobody ever says HPAT or HPTA. Um, so th- that's actually part of that axis. So when one is off, it affects the other ones. That's why they call it the axis. Or so I- is it common that people that have issues with it then that a lot of times are possibly in these, you know, high intensity, high stress states of training and, and, and caloric deficits? You know, if you, if you're constantly hammering yourself all the time, because I know she, I mean, I, I follow her pretty regularly and. She trains really, really intense. That's she tough has, though, because you're talking about cancer, and that's a really, really tough. Yeah, one. no, I'm not trying to connect that. You know, she, she's yeah. got cancer from the stairmaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is that you know somebody that is susceptible to something like that, and is pushing the body like that, I would think that that can't be an ideal situation. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. I'll this tell is you, stuff that I love to talk to Mike about. It would. It'd be. It'd be. I mean, look, you know, being fit and healthy is always going to help you no matter what. Right. So. Um, but yeah, that's but a, a lot, good question. But a lot of people, uh, being fit and healthy doesn't always, isn't always connected. We talked about this earlier, yesterday or le- the other day on the podcast about how they just came out with that study of somebody who went on a diet versus somebody who went on a diet and then did cardio and you lose lose muscle mass. So technically, mm-hmm. the person who diets and then does all this potential intense cardio, if you lose lean body mass you're less healthy than the person that has more lean body mass. Yeah, so well, you're, so you're, it do, just exercise doesn't always necessarily correlate point, yeah. correlate with being better, healthy or just or better. better. Yeah. Yeah, no, um if you go into any kind of a difficult treatment like some of the ones that are that there are for cancer, you probably want to go into it with as much muscle as possible just because of the muscle loss that occurs. Now, the good news is and I don't know the details of of her diagnosis, but I do know that most thyroid cancers in stage 1 and stage 2 are Pretty, pretty treatable, right? Yeah, they're pretty treatable. But you still got to go through some nasty stuff. And mm. we wish her the absolute yeah, absolutely. best. I mean, you know, so if you if you know who she is, she's a wonderful young lady, great social media yeah, page. She's been on our show. She's a fantastic person. Yeah, Erica Fit Love is uh, on Instagram. And get on there and, and wish her, you know, like 
You she's know. also getting ready to open. I mean, this all hit right at the same time. I feel for her at the same time. She's getting ready to open up and launch mm-hmm. her her business. Well, I mean, actually, her business has been going, but she's got her own storefront, and mm-hmm. I know that's all exciting news for her. So, it, well, she's a. I mean, she's a badass. Yeah, like, no, that re- girl has done a lot of shit on her own. Yeah, yeah. and made it happen. So, you know, what's that saying? You, you don't you you get as much as you can handle or whatever. Like life throws at you what you can handle. Yeah, it's, and, that's how the Bible is. That what that is? Yeah, uh, anyway, derived well, from that. Yeah, she's a, she's a I mean she's a badass. So if anybody could take this and spin it into a positive, it's definitely you know definitely her. So. Yeah, you guys see, we're getting a lot of good feedback on the the mind pump Thanksgiving. If you listen to this podcast and you don't go to the YouTube channel ever, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really love us. Well, that's what that says. And if you're listening right now, for those, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out here so they they know what's coming in the future, um, in the near future, is. We have Mind Pump TV, which is the main uh, channel for us. Uh, we also have Mind Pump Radio, which is on YouTube, which mirrors the podcast, which those that just like the YouTube platform better and they want to listen. You can to, listen to the podcast. You can there. listen to the podcast on there. But eventually, we're going to start to really segment the the YouTube channel. We'll still continue to have the main page that will will get all the stuff. But now the thing has grown to the size it is. I think we're up to 150 thousand subscribers and we add on average 300 to 700 subscribers a day so it's rapidly growing a month it, yeah no a day uh, and as it's growing uh we're getting more and more people that want specific content for that and of course we want to try to uh, do that as much as we possibly can without creating a ton of extra work for ourselves and w- so what we're going to do is there's going to be a just exercise library that's all the exercises that we have in the programs and information like we've been doing for a long time in there and then there'll be like the vlogs and the you know more long form content that's Mm -hmm. more on the entertainment side and we'll start to separate that so you know if you're if you're there for the entertainment you can just be there for the entertainment and you don't give a shit about the informative type of stuff Um, and those that are just wanting education and they don't you know they have a hard time listening to someone like Paul check and they don't want to hear something like that and they and they did just want that content. I, I know we got on the YouTube channel there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that had never listened to our podcast and we were introduced to uh what was the gentleman's name that I, I really enjoy oh Farrell. Mark yeah, Farrell. Mark yeah. not Mark. No Do- William Yeah yeah Dr. Mark <laughs> Warren Farrell. Warren, Warren Farrell. Yeah I was gonna there say William Warren. That's on our forum. Sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> Mark hey what's Farrell. up buddy? Hey shout out to our forum <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah. 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 So Warren, Warren Farrell was uh, definitely, you know, shocking conversation, a great conversation. I love one of my favorite interviews we did, uh, especially for the climate that, that we're in right now. That Thanksgiving vlog looked like a massive, uh, just on accident. A Viore like a, commercial. Yeah, because everybody showed up wearing. I think we even said that in the in the vlog. We you, did. Yeah, yeah, I think someone made a, a comment. I think Taylor made a comment. But no, it wasn't planned, dude. That was really. Just, no, yeah. Th- that's just how much we all wear the gear. I fucking love the gear. Well, what's so funny about it is I've worked out so many times now with the Viore pants on because they're so comfortable and like I can squat, deadlift, do all these things with them anyway. And I don't like I've never worked out in pants like that many times because you always rip the seat. Yeah, it's yeah, a, it, it's a risk. Yeah. It's, a, it's a real it's, risk. It's a dope brand that again, kudos to Taylor. You know, this is why we have him on staff. He's brilliant when it comes to stuff, and it's really cool to see. Uh, you know, when when Taylor finds a brand like this, and a lot of people probably don't know this or won't know this because it's it's they're taking off like crazy now. But you know, we were talking to Viore over a year and a half ago. And that was a long time in the works to make that happen. We were the first podcast they ever advertised on or collaborated with. And now I'm starting to see them everywhere. Yeah. And I mean, they're popping up. Yeah, they're big, growing like crazy. Man. Yeah. It's, and so that's cool. That's it's a good product. Yeah, it's, it a, it's a great product. And, and uh, you know, just uh, highlighting having someone badass on our staff that that's, that's what they do. It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, he found know? the right one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, did you guys, uh, so I showed you guys those videos yesterday from my daughter's yeah. Play oh, yeah, dude. Oh. That, that melted you, huh? Oh, my God. Well, you know, we wa- I was so nervous. Dude, that- she got personality, man. I know. She's fearless She's with that kind of stuff. She's going to be a stand-up comedian, It's dude. really crazy because I would have never done that at her age, but she loves it, and so she was the she was Wilbur in Charlotte's Web. Now, her, mom's, her mom seems quiet and shy to me, too. Ne- never would she have done that either. Yeah, that's really mm. interesting no. to me. That's why when she comes here to visit, she's enamored by the cameras and the mics. 
She wants to be on the YouTube channel. You gotta she foster to, that man. Yeah. I, I I am, and I want to make sure I foster it the right way because I don't yeah, want I mean, her to end up in I fucking mean, Hollywood. Because uh, <laughs> you know, what yeah. I'm no, she's gonna end up at Mind Pump Media. Are you yeah, kidding me? Hopefully. No, no it's funny because like when we came over for dinner and she was showing like my my kids like magic tricks. Yeah. And and she's like really into like entertaining and she has like it, that inspired my oldest actually to get into magic. No way. Yeah, he's like totally trying to figure out these card tricks and stuff but it was like cool to see that they were like really like enamored by your daughter's I, like performance i've taught her a few magic tricks and so when people yeah. come over she'll and I, I tell her i said you have to practice in front of the mirror so she'll practice in front of the mirror and i'm like you know what you know what got her into it is i showed her um david blaine oh yeah i put david blaine's magic like whatever show on yeah. netflix <clears throat> And she went like she watched like three of them straight. It was like three hours, and I didn't want to take her from there because I could tell she was into it. It was sparking something inside of her. Mm -hmm. But yeah, last night we go there and we're watching the play, and I'm super nervous. You know, I'm like, oh my god, my kid's gonna go up there. I'm like nervous yeah. for her. Yeah. She comes out and she just fucking kills it, and it's like, I, you know, I wasn't that emotional of a person before I had kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm sitting there. I'm you, you, bro. I can't wait. I can't wait oh, for yeah. you, Adam. Yeah, bro. You waterworks, dude. dude. You're it's, just, it's always the guy that's the biggest hard ass. Always. Too, right? it's, yep. it's yeah. It. Always. Yeah. I'm sitting there and I'm. I can <laughs> feel it. So I'm like, oh, it'll pierce you. I gotta fight it the whole time. Oh, don't cry. Yeah. But you know. And then I gave her flowers afterwards and gave her a big hug and just it was. So awesome to oh, see that. God. So awesome. Hey, Justin, what are you going to do uh, about the coffee shop issue, man? What's that, that going to have a coffee shop issue? Oh, you just didn't hear? No. Oh, it's Starbucks putting the stomp on no, <laughs> no, no more porn watching. Oh, yeah. I did see that. Oh, they're going <laughs> to block that? Yeah, dude. I don't know. Like, I might have to do it at my house like a regular person, you know? I can't, yeah, they, I can't go you out watch, to, you watch porn to my set, quote, unquote, second office. It's a big you know? issue. Yeah. They had a huge petition. I can't- like Why? A, is it people just pulling up porn on their computers? Well, that's, I mean, come on. You know, that's like- It's free Wi-Fi. doing that? It's the number one thing that everybody watches. Plus, you have a little dopamine boost from the caffeine and, you know- hey, <laughs> I'm gonna sit over here in the corner. No one's gonna know yeah. what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> they have locks on the door on the bathroom doors. You know? Well, I don't think they're in trouble for looking at porn in the bathroom. It must be out in the public. Yeah, that's what it is. So McDonald's did a ban on this like uh, 2006 or something like that, a long time ago, and supposedly Starbucks was supposed to fall suit, and they just never did. Mm. And finally, enough people got together and petitioned it and said, "Hey, dude, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting in yeah. line to get my coffee, and you know Justin's over there watching." <sighs> I mean, you know, backdoor bandits. I might, like, yeah, I might have to go back to just Instagram. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, just get it all from there. Topple porn. It's, yeah. it's great. That's crazy. They actually had to do a ban. What's funny to me is like, who? I mean, I get it that it, that you would do that. I guess maybe you just want the free Wi-Fi and you're too you're you're too cheap I to do it at your own house. I think some people. I think some people. Are get, you that addicted that you got to do it? bags out there that'll do that. I you know? think some people get off on doing that kind of shit in public. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, don't you guys remember there was like a case out there of this guy that was on a plane that like was just like sitting next to somebody and on his laptop just poof, just puts it out there like, oh. You know what would be funny actually? <laughs> that would be a hilarious- <laughs> That's a, the worst part a, a, hilari a hilarious video yeah. would be to- Plug in your fucking, you know, or your over ear headphones, noise cancellation on the plane, pull your Apple laptop out and just straight watch porn yeah. on the plane. Yeah, that's, like, just, that's literally what that guy did. Yeah, like, nobody, like this lady like next, nobody. this poor lady, like, it's just like, you know, like hitting the call oh, button. Like, I would, uh, I would love to make somebody. a video of that. Would it not be hilarious to do that to yeah, somebody? It's like the most uncomfortable <laughs> moment for that poor lady. <laughs> Dude, there's this, have you guys heard of this? I'm just picturing like the face of the person next to the yeah, person. Yeah, he's just like, eating you know yeah. just like imagine like, if you're the ooh, you're, yeah, the, you're, you're the middle seat we yeah. should make that deal the next He's time we fly, like a movie whoever's middle seat has to do this <laughs> you know, just pull it out porn? yeah dude so, it, it, you like turn to the guy next to you like, you seen this one huh you seen it <laughs> i got i got something worse for you oh. i one of my buddies so i have this group of friends that plays pranks on each other and they're just fucking ruthless like terrible terrible yeah. pranks yeah. and there was this this text that you could send someone. Oh, I got the email, dude. My cousin did this to no, me. No, no, no. This isn't the porn one. Oh. I, I love that one, too. Like, I'm looking at porn. <laughs> yes, yeah. It was I'm a, looking I'm at looking porn. At yeah. porn. Yeah. Oh, where it says it. Yeah. No, this one, you tap it, and it, uh, it, <laughs> it starts speaking in, like, Arabic, and Islamic writing goes across your screen, and then it does a countdown. <laughs> <laughs> he's on a plane. He's on a plane. That's so wrong. He's on a plane. 
and, oh my, and my buddy texted him on the plane. No. So he opens it. It's oh like, no. and yeah, and it's like real loud, you know? And then did the countdown. <laughs> Ten, nine. <laughs> I've never it's seen so that. Fucked up. I've never seen that. It's before. the fucking worst thing oh you've ever seen God. in your life. That is fucked up. That's a fuck. Oh <laughs> Oh, just yes. as dark. Oh, that would kill me. Like, literally would kill me. <laughs> tell me that. <laughs> so, we got an incident. You know? <laughs> people just get well, up. People will uh, fuck you up. We got no. a live one over oh, here. People will be so mad at well, you. Well, you're going to get your ass beat. Oh, you know, like, <laughs> like, we know now. You're not even Some allowed guy to from say, Texas just whips out. You're not even allowed to say bomb at the airport. You no. say that, people give you the dirtiest yeah, look. Yeah, no, no. You could, you, could, you could say a lot of other things before you say You I say know. that in an airport and oh, people yeah. fuck Well, you're going to get your ass beat because everybody knows now like if somebody ever did something like that nowadays the whole plane would beat your ass so, yeah. it's poor guy. <laughs> so he's like trying to turn like, the phone no. oh my god Just scrambling bro. the funniest thing. was that wow. recent or what i never it even... was a while ago dude oh, we were god. fucking pissing our pants that's, dude it, that's great it, yeah it's just it's the oh, most really? terrible thing <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, dude me. i wanted to tell you guys about uh a, it's not a documentary it's like a short series on net netflix that you guys have to watch. It's phenomenal. What is it? Is it's, that fat? What is it called? It's called. It's the one I was telling you about earlier. It's so phenomenal. It's called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. So it's this this female chef. Sounds delicious. It's this female chef who is one of the most personable people I've ever seen on TV. You'll instantly like her. And she explains why those are the four ingredients that you need to master if you want to master cooking. Mm. And she goes around the world mm. and, and explains, like, sense. like she goes to Italy for fat and talks about how they use fat in their cooking. And, you know, the, the, the fat that, you know, distinguishes Italian food is olive oil, and she talks about it. But then she shows when she cooks and how it works and the science. And it's such a good documentary. Mm. It's so, so good. I'm, I'm going to try and reach out to this girl, in fact, because her book is now well, selling shit tons of copies. Speaking of Netflix, you just reminded me of an article that I just read about a company called uh, Dazen or D-A-Z-N. Are you mm. guys familiar with it? No. They're like the Netflix of sports. So mm. it's a UK streaming service uh, that is just launched in the US in September after already getting a foothold in the markets in Canada, Germany, and Japan, now the company has begun its full marketing blitz with TV ads running during NFL games. So they're like the the, the sports for. I'm excited. about So this. you could pay a monthly fee and watch yeah, like sweet. NFL and stuff like that. Yeah, I yeah. thought the NFL had exclusive Streaming. deals with uh, with like ABC and. I shit think like that. they did. I don't think that. I think now they've all moved away from that. So really, they, yeah, oh, that's it right there. But I mean, I, I'm. Oh, they've got MMA and shit mostly. Oh, it looks like. Look right. Well, so if you're a sports a fanatic coach. and you watch MMA, basketball, hockey, fo I mean, all the things that I watch. So it's, it's got a, all those sports. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's going to be the. They, that's, they call it the Netflix of sports. Well, this is the future. Yeah. I mean, there's really no. There's no way to. to uh, what's the word? Stop it from happening. Everything a la carte. And yeah. then you just sort of like pick your options. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I hope they succeed. I love it too. The only knock that I have, I mean, I, I've told you guys I've been the on this, this streaming kick and, you know, I've got it all set up now at my place. And I, for the most part, I like it, but it's not quite like when I watch, like I watched Wreck It Ralph. If I watch, if I stream a movie that's like, you know, saved or what like that, the quality is just. And sports is normally, when you run cable, sports is like the highest quality. That's the mm -hmm. one thing. Like yeah. When, I, yeah. when you watch. You know, high def. You know, cable, cable, uh, sports. It's it's the best. I mean, you could see the the blades of grass. You mm -hmm. know, it's like so so crystal clear. And with the streaming, it's not quite hmm. up to that level yet. And I, but I mean, we're so close. I feel like it's it's there, and it's it's good enough that it makes the sense for what I what I'm paying. I'm going like, okay, well, I'm I, I'm not paying very much. I'm under a hundred dollars. And I was well over two hundred dollars. Really? Yeah, before oh, yeah. I was like two fifty. Like uh, old yeah, media, like old media is dying. There ain't nothing that anybody can do to stop it. They're nope. they're absolutely dying. They're, they're they're they've been disrupted like crazy, and that's that's already that's obvious. Mm -hmm. Education, I think, is going to be the next big massively disrupt. It's already starting to happen. Where it's, that's starting to get disrupted. I'm seeing more and more articles now. I had a debate now. with my my uncle. Of course, you you never want to debate somebody who just finished their degree with that. You know, they get hella pissed. Of course they do. You don't <laughs> you want say, to say because we had I did exactly. You wasted your money. Yeah, two yeah. college students that just graduated. Then my uncle and we're all talking. I said, I think I think education is going to get flipped on its head in the next twenty years for sure. How, how can yeah. you deny that? Well, you know, some people think that it's too much of a. Um, uh, it's too big of a ship to turn. Yeah, they have too much control right now. Like the, the universities so did, have too much control. Okay, that, did, mm. let me ask you a question. Does think of an industry where.
think of an industry that uh, compares to media in terms of how much control the media before the internet came along. Before well, I, this, they well, fucking control. Well, here's here's, here's everything. Their part of their argument, and I, that I somewhat agree with, is like when you think of like some of the, the politicians that are out there that are making decisions and setting regulation and 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 pushing these things through, or would, would allow or not allow something to happen. You know, many of these people are from these prestigious schools, the Harvards, the Stanfords, sure. like you know, they're they're probably a good old boys club, and they're all in there, and they're and they're going like you know, I get that. I but could see I could see it being hard. Too. I I get that, but media as powerful as they are, Hollywood as powerful as they are. I agree with you. I'm playing devil's advocate. Well, I, I was the one who was arguing. They couldn't stop music being stolen, movies being stolen. Mm. They had to join. Well, the in. parents' influence is going to determine all of that. It's not the institution. It's the employers. Yeah. The employers are going to determine it. Like and what's it, what 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 is it what stops right now a, a a student taking courses and then turning around and basically teaching it and just not calling because where you get in trouble if you oh this is Harvard courses for this or that but what's to stop a student nothing you could create a channel right now right. on YouTube and do it yourself and teach course. yourself you know uh-huh. what I'm saying saying I'm not I'm not a certified teacher I'm not this I'm not a student but I'm I'm going to teach you what I'm learning in school and the market will determine how good you are right and if he's good at fucking giving the information that's right like I, I think employers are going to I think employers are dry, are going to drive it because right let's say you're a tech company which most companies are going to be tech companies in in the next 20 30 years right they're all going to be tech but let's say you're a tech company and you want you know you cuz I was actually having this argument with my cousins the other day and we were going back and forth on the value of going to one of these Ivy League colleges and the connections you'll make and this and that and that the connections are worth it and I said well, okay I can understand that like I could, I could definitely understand today going to Stanford uh, or you know MIT or whatever, and people see that, and that gives you a lot of prestige. I said, but let's just fast forward ten or fifteen years. You're an employer. You have two options. You have two people in front of you. One of them got their masters at Stanford. The other one got their education on their own, but also started their own YouTube channel has 100,000 subscribers, has already built authority in the market because of how they talk and how they do things. So not only do they have the following, but they have also have they also have experience in, in proving that they can talk about these things. Which one's more valuable? Right. Which one's going to be more valuable? And so that's what I think is going to happen. I think yeah, employers- Yeah, but which one is easier to employ? Easier to employ? Yeah. I, the self-starter, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? Well, I just, like, you know, some businesses will think of it- in terms of being able to indoctrinate them in their system and all that. Like somebody that already has a YouTube channel and already has all this like uh, clout may, you know, think of themselves very highly. I really think the way we're going to see it happen is companies like, I mean, like we talk about Amazon taking over 50% of e I mean, that just fucking blew my mind yeah. to hear that yeah. stat. I mean, yeah. so someone who is that, that powerful that employs that many people, I feel like it. They will create something that will be like an in, in-house education. Yeah, and true. and P, and if you're a young kid in high school right now, love Amazon, love the company, follow it already enough. Or take their one-year course, right? And then you have an opportunity to. And it'd be levels, right? You know, certification one gets you jobs that entry-level jobs that could pay between twenty-five and fifty. If you go through level two certification, we can get you have 100%. potential. Yeah, it'll look just like apprenticeships back in the day. You right. know, just it, like on a different uh, platform. Plus with, with these, like tech companies. Companies. Plus, with tech and how fast technology advances, if you go get a four-year degree, the shit you learn in the first two years when you graduate is it's going to become somewhat obsolete. Now, you go work for one of these big companies; they're teaching you what they need you to know right now, and it's probably going to save them money, especially when the market gets so competitive as it is. When you're looking for these workers who are going to do these high-skilled things, rather than waiting for kids to come out of school, you're gonna. I think they're going to go pick them. They're going to go pick them out of high schools. Or they'll pick them out of the junior colleges or whatever. Hey, come take our course, and you know it'll it'll cost you nothing, but you'll work for us type of deal. Yeah, that's what I think is going to drive it. So I think education is going to get totally disrupted. Oh, yeah. I, I see. It, yeah, big changes, big change. I mean, it's all the access to all that information is out there already. It's a matter of like you know the consumer really finding it. So I don't I don't really see like a big urgency anymore to well, get a degree. How, how weird will it be when? Thing, if things go the direction that Elon Musk believes it's going to go, what if in twenty years, you know, you're you have now your phone know, knowing shit's going to be nothing, right? No, yeah. like getting taught doesn't I matter. I can Google search. No, it. you're right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like how yeah. how crazy is that going to be if he's if he's right? If he's right, where the the evolution of AI is really going to look like it's going to get integrated into us. Okay. 
have you heard of Sal? Have you heard of uh, neuromorphic why engineering? You, why why no. you only ask Sal? Why didn't you ask me? <laughs> I just I don't know. I don't know if you read I was, like Scientific I was, American. I was the one anything. that was just talking about this, yeah. and then you just he fucking fig- look over here and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> he, f- he figured he didn't. Know. Sorry, Adam. I, I, I don't mean to like, you know, dick? oversee you or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam, have you heard of neuromorphic no, engineering I, I or computing? I have. It. I have okay, it. okay. Ask Sal. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, so it's it's like this this computer chip that uh, I guess that they're trying to mimic the human brain in terms of like the neurons and like so they've already shown with like what they can do with these chips for this computer. Basically, it, the the speed of it's like I don't know four to ten times faster already firing than the human brain. So it mimics the human brain, but like basically four to ten times faster. Uh, that's insane. I have not heard of this. Yeah, I I mean I think along the lines of what you know what you guys are both talking about. I think. The value, the things that are going to be worth a lot in the market in the future are not going to be how much knowledge you have. Because as knowledge becomes more and more accessible and as we become, as it becomes easier for us to access it, you know, in real time, then that skill is going to be, it'd be like, it's almost like having a skill where you can uh, add up really well. Like, you know, oh, I can add up really well. Like nobody cares. We have calculators. It doesn't, doesn't, that's not a skill we need anymore. I think the skills you're going to need are going to be creativity, uh are going to be people skills, and how to integrate uh, all these things. I think those are the skills that will be valuable. Integrators will be integrate and disseminate the information, right? To be able to distill all the knowledge. You you can can filter it all and you can present it to somebody and and communicate it better than than a machine would. Right. That's To me, that's what I see. Because you could have all the knowledge. We see this today. We still see examples. There's plenty of brilliant minds that just cannot articulate their Mm -hmm. point or cannot teach it to somebody else. And so that skill set will, I think, be even more important in the future. Other, talking about other crazy things and disruptors and shit going the other way. You see Bitcoin fucking fall through. Tanking, the, huh? Tanking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all the way down to like four four grand or five grand yeah, or something yeah. crazy. What was it? 19,000? What, uh, what Bitcoin? They, I ha- yeah. I feel like they do this to then like later it's going to have a big jump. Well, well I mean, the argument like it's a pump and dump. Is yeah. What it is. Pump and dump. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. It looks like that's what it, I mean, it doesn't, to me, I, I have a I have my brother in law, uh, my good buddy, our buddy Everett. Like we, I have a bunch of buddies that you know, uh, Craig was doing it too. They all got on it and they were they were kind of like day trading it and they're just they're fucking with the margins. And I know Chris Harrington on our uh, forum. I know he's a day trader and and he follows stuff like this. Uh, you know, I looked at it like, and I still stand by what I said from the very beginning is I believe in 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 it long term. I bet on about seven different coins. That I I thought were will do something. I don't give a shit where they're at right now. I haven't sold any of it. I I, I put a few few bucks in all of it a long time ago, and I will hold on to it forever until it's fucking crazy. Yeah. And I'm not trying to make a quick dollar off of it because again, and I said this in a, a recent podcast, you know, regardless if it goes legitimate and becomes a, a legitimate currency for us, it will serve the black market. And I had a you know, one of my good drug dealer friends I was hanging out with yesterday. So, and <laughs> What's one of the many. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they, he gets paid in Bitcoin. I mean, yeah. he's, he's dealing with major, uh, you know, major product. And the safest thing for, you know, him to get paid in right now is to do that. Yeah. I, I didn't, I think you're smart in the sense that you got it and you forgot about it. Yeah. I think people, when you play that kind of game, just, do it and leave it and take money that you don't need to worry about. Yeah, it's a long gamble for me. That's the way I looked at it. You know? Yeah, same here. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Just James. Why is it the guys can put on so much mass in prison considering the quality of meals and their only advantage is training frequency? Is it possible that training frequency trumps caloric surplus for muscle building? Well, that, mm. absolutely, you could argue that. Mm. I mean, there's a hundred, I mean, yeah, you got all, these guys are doing shit three yeah. times a day, dude. I mean, I, I, for sure, I thought about going to prison just so I get yeah, jacked. Yeah. <laughs> aside, aside from the fear of, uh, you know. I thought about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, fuck, yeah. dude. I, I would just work out all the time. You got yeah. nothing else yeah. to do. Well, yeah. it's gang read. I would read, and I thought about it. I thought about going to jail just so yeah. I could get educated yeah. and get buff. 
Yeah. That, I, have you ever had that thought though? Like, God, what if I went to jail? Like, not that you'd want to go, right? But that's mm-hmm. what you would do. No, I'm no. serious. All I, I mean, I literally, lift lift literally thought about purposely going to jail. But I really thought, like, if I if I did get thrown in jail, and of course I thought about this. I mean, I was doing things that for sure could have got me in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So this is definitely a thought. Yeah, this yeah. definitely crossed my mind. And I thought, and I thought, well, what, would it be that bad if I had to well, serve five years? Well, five years, I'd fucking it'd be like going through a university. I would just read. And yeah. train, read <laughs> and train. Come out and everybody's like, fuck, dude. Uh, well, that's- do you do something about your pretty face somehow? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks yeah. uglier? Yeah, do something. Yeah, because yeah. you, you can't fix that, bro. You're, Just handsome. Yeah, you're fresh fish. There's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll be honest. laughs> What do they call it? That's what they call yeah, it. Yeah. Fresh fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's wow. yeah. It's so this actually highlights something that's quite important uh, to highlight, and that is that if you send the right signal to your body, if your body wants to build muscle. It usually will. Now, there's a lot of people that will debate me over this. A lot of people in the muscle building space who say, you know, no, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's all about just eating more food and you can't overtrain. You only undereat. And I've heard statements like that before. Absolutely ludicrous. And, and here's how you know. I could take anybody. I don't care who you are. Keep their diet the same. Keep their training the same. Just give them steroids. Guess what's going to happen to them? They're going to gain a little bit of muscle. Now, that's a hormonal signal. But that just highlights that if you send the right signal, somehow things will start to happen with the body. Now, with that particular example, that person may lose body fat and build muscle because they're not taking in more calories. But with the example of people in prison, it's the training frequency, Mm -hmm. number one. The second thing is they probably get good sleep. You go to bed at a certain time. You wake up at a certain time. Yeah, Yeah. It's all all regimented. They're also what I think people aren't considering, too, because you think, oh, man, they're only eating like three meals a day. It's not a lot of calories to build, but they're not moving a lot either. They're 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 pretty sedentary. For well, the bro, most part. if you have nothing else, if you're in the prison, so all, all your, your only activity is training. You're working out. Yeah. yeah, you're doing workouts. You're doing trigger sessions. You're doing oh. push-ups. You're doing sit-ups. You're doing lunges. And you're doing all that in your cell too, because you know you. Yeah, it's like survival mode. That's it, and the body responds very, very, very well to training frequency, especially <clears throat> if you're. Con- Here's the thing with training frequency that a lot of people need to understand is that it needs to be done consistently for you to see how it works. Because I know people will be like, oh, I do. You know, I, I've done the real the frequent like trigger sessions, you know, on some days. Like, no, 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 it's not the same. Do it every day and then watch what happens. Didn't we think about naming one of our programs like the prison workout or something like that uh, just to, because we we didn't we didn't think that people would think it's challenging enough? Yeah. I think it was anywhere. Yeah. I think anywhere well, we talked about. Because they already came out. I actually have a book. It's like Convict Conditioning. And uh, I think Dragon Door put it out, but well, yeah, it was all about that as far as like how to like make the most intense body weight training you possibly could. It's so funny because when I uh, first uh, created the, the first MAPS program, MAPS Anabolic, right? And when I came up with the concept of trigger sessions, it was the blue collar workers and it was people who went to prison that inspired that. It really was because I thought to myself, you know, I have all these family members that are blue collar workers that don't work out, but the body parts that correspond to the activity that they do with their job, for example, plumbers and their forearms or my you know family members that were mail carriers and their calves, they all had these very muscular body parts and you know they weren't tearing muscle down, they weren't hammering their bodies. It was just this, this frequent stimulation over years and years and years to the point where I have uncles who are totally deconditioned otherwise, like skinny arms, pot belly. But because the dude has been a, a mail carrier for 18 years, he's got sculpted diamond calves, like no joke. And then I have, again, other four, uh, you know, uh, family members with forearms that would rival an amateur bodybuilder's and the rest of their bodies That's aren't my, that muscular. That's my stepdad from being a carpenter his whole life. Mm-hmm. Exactly. These crazy mm-hmm. forearms. Exactly. Yeah. And then Plumber. I thought to myself- His forearms are almost the size of his biceps, actually. It's really yeah. crazy. And, and, it, and he's not, he doesn't work out. Yeah, no. And it's not even a workout for him to swing a hammer anymore. It's super routine. It's that frequent- stimulation. And then I thought about prisoners. I said, ah, that makes perfect sense because prisoner, when they go to, when when people go to jail, you have nothing else to do. You got nothing else to do. So what do they do? Work out harder? No, they're working out hard. They just work out more and more frequently. And in fact, when you talk to people who've been to prison, they'll tell you that they do, they do similar concepts to like what trigger sessions are. So they'll they'll have their time where they are they have in the yeah, yard they'll spread it out throughout the entire day right and a lot of gyms by the way in in uh, California I think prisons got rid of weights completely yeah so weights are out of California uh, prisons so however what a lot of people are doing is they're just doing push ups sit ups 
they're using their beds for dips and their their beds for body rows and they're modify they're using towels where a partner pulls on the towel and they pull it to do rows and they do workouts literally when you talk to because I've I, I have friends who've been to prison they're like oh yeah we'll work out you know four times a day hmm. every day every single because what else are you going to do and you're extra motivated and you have nothing else yeah. to do and their bodies respond very well even though their calories aren't super high um, I know when they're trying to build muscle like tuna fish is like is like gold and they'll trade pretty much anything for 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 tuna fish if they want to gain you know muscle and they'll ask for the family to send them creatine through the mail and all that stuff hmm. but it's it's the it's the training signal and this is why you know for a long time in the fitness industry we've taken the the focus off of workout programming for some reason i i remember when this happened like if if you look at bodybuilding magazines in the late 80s they were still talking a lot about this workout that oh, did real I, well i blame supplements man. it is it I is. mean, when, mm-hmm. I mean, because it wasn't that long ago when supplements really didn't exist for the most part. They I mean, just weren't big, like they're yeah. Not. And it became all about the supplement. Yeah. Everything was all about maximizing the pump, and now the pre workout, and what the window anabolic windows, and like the workouts so, fell out the window. Yes, yeah. all the arguing and debating, and what, and, and all this stuff became all about the supplementation. And it was like, wow, it's no one's really pills. discussing. And I, I, I'm just as guilty of this. I mean, I fell into the same belief of that too. I was all my trainer buddies and I were always, "Have you tried this yet? Have you tried that yet?" What stack are you like on, we weren't bro? sitting around going like, "Oh, are you you know talking about how they were programming?" Like, no, oh, exactly. No, no, as trainers, we are trainers, and I did not sit down with other trainers and talk about programming. I did not at all. Not definitely not until years and years later. That's what I'm saying. Like the importance was taken off training and was placed on supplements or food or, of course, anabolic steroids. <laughs> To where it doesn't matter what your workouts are, but before that, it was all about the workouts. It was like, oh wow, that person, you know, how do you work your biceps? Oh, I squeeze harder at the top, or I do this tempo. Have you tried bands? Have you tried this dumbbell exercise? Have you tried this combination of movements? Have you tried hitting your body parts three days a week instead of uh, instead of two days a week? Yeah. You know, have you tried a double split routine? It used to be like this all the time, and bodybuilders and strength athletes would compare routines. This only continues to exist in the strength sports. Strength sports are where people really pay attention to exercise programming. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like changing your body, because all the marketing has been focused on supplements, everybody forgot about the workout. So now if somebody's not building muscle, it's like, oh, well, it must be, you need to take more, you know, supplement protein or you need more of this or you need to eat more whatever. You training, up your dose. Yeah, the training is the, is the, that's the center. Because if you send the right signal, your body will want to change. In fact, if you send the right signal and you're trying to build muscle, you're going to eat more food because guess what happens? You get hungrier. Mm-hmm. That's one of the first signs if you have a good workout. Well, I know it's still part of the culture too because when I ask somebody and they their response is, you know, like when I ask them like, oh, well, tell, what, what's your programming like? And they're like, oh, no, I, I train hard. You know, I train good or yeah. I'm consistent. It's like those are the, I'm consistent, I train hard, I, my program is good. Well, what the fuck does that mean? Like, I know. Like how do you, oh, no, no. I, I be more vague? Or the, the ones that think they're really doing things well. Oh, I mix it up, you know. I mix yeah. it up. I don't always do the same stuff. I know that it's important to do that. Like muscle confusion is something that people oh, have, have adopted and at least know that that's like your advanced person thinks Mm -hmm. that way and well this is also what we how we knew that we had a real legitimate business that we could build was because there was such a need for this and that was how we're going to monetize was teaching programs teaching Mm -hmm. how to program correctly for your adaptation your goal and nobody was really doing that it was it would be much easier and faster for us to attach a bunch of supplements to all a bunch of random workouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be easy. I mean, mm-hmm. if I, we could just be spitting those out all day long and throw, throwing supplement stacks that are reoccurring revenue and the company would be far more profitable. We would have made more money a lot faster. It's but, way easier to sell that. Right. Way easier to sell that. But in the long term, you know what's happening? What are we seeing now? People now are starting to figure it out because the ones that did follow our programs are saying, oh shit, wait a minute. This makes a matter. This makes a big difference. Yeah. Like how I, the, the programming makes a massive difference and they're telling their friends and their friends are starting to, to hear about it. And I, I really hope that the industry, I really hope that the industry changes where people start to, it's funny. I get, I got a mess at DM the other day where, where somebody asked me, Hey, what do you think of the beach body workouts? And I'm like, well, uh, for the most ones I've seen, I think are not that good. Well, you know, what do you mean? I, they make me really sore and I, I sweat a lot and I, I think I burn a lot of calories. And I said, yeah, that's it. The, they don't. There's no focus on the programming, the real programming. It's literally arm exercise, leg exercise, you know, jumping movement, make you sweat, slap it all together. Let's put good music. 
There's no focus on the on the programming. But any strength coach, any athletic coach that's worth their salt will tell you that the programming is extremely fucking important. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's extremely important for the average person too. You might not want to be you know, squatting the most weight, deadlifting the most weight, or being the fastest athlete. The same principles apply. Same principles apply. It's your, if you're fine, you just want to lose weight and you want to sculpt your body. You just want to be fit. You want to look good. You can only work out two or three days a week in the gym. No problem. Programming matters a fuck ton, just like it does for, for high level yeah. athletes. No different. Right. Yeah. They just want to avoid it because it, it actually takes a lot of effort to like construct it all and it, really like do it the right it way. It takes expertise. That's why. It, it's I, expertise. I, any idiot. Any idiot who knows 10 exercises, which anybody could do with 10 minutes on the internet, yeah. can create a bullshit routine that'll make you sweat, right. wrap it up real nice, throw some marketing on it, make it sound cool, have a hot chick do it or some buff dude do it, yeah. attach a supplement to it, boom, you got yourself a, a business in the fitness industry, unfortunately. Shreds. Next question is from Fitness by Juna. So in a lot of the MAPS programs, the full body workouts have only one or two leg movements and the rest is upper body. So they seem upper body dominant. My lower body is much more of my priority. So how can I progress my lower body faster? Currently, all my trigger and focus sessions are already glute and ham oriented. It's cr this is so common with You're, our programs. Dude, how funny is it? Did you guys ever have to talk about this with clients? With yes. Like, I'm working out my arms again. You're like, hold on a second. There's a lot of muscles in your upper body. Yeah. yeah. We're not just working out arms. There's yeah. your there's muscles in your back. Right. There's your chest. There's your shoulders. You have your biceps and your triceps. Your lower body, we have your glutes, hams, and, ha and, and your quads. And maybe your calves, if you want to hit those too, and some people don't. Yeah. So that's why it looks like that. Because yeah. when we're working the upper body, we're tr having to target so many different muscles. Not so. to mention, a, you know, one set of squats compared to bicep curls, tricep pushdowns, and lateral raises <laughs> exactly. is c completely different. I mean, right. the, the, the amount of output that you need... You know, just from a calorie perspective, energy perspective, from a central nervous uh, system perspective is 10 times more with a, a squat or a deadlift than it is for these these isolation movements that do not take very much at all. So and this is common with all of our MAPS programs. We always get the simplicity thing and it goes right back to what we were just talking about is, you know, do I mean, I could absolutely throw you know, squats and lunges and leg curls and leg extensions and, you know, jumps, box squats and, and just blast your legs if that's what you want. But if you want them to respond and you want them to grow, there's there's science behind the way we've programmed and we've or, organized it. And if you and, think about it this way, if it's so let's say you're doing, you know, one, one of our MAPS programs and you're hitting your whole body on average three days a week. Right. And let's say there's one to two movements for your lower body. We'll say your legs. Uh, all, all those days. So let's say you're doing one to two exercises. Each exercise typically has three to four sets. So that's anywhere between three to six sets, three days a week. It's a lot of volume. Do the math. Add up the sets. How many sets is that per week? Well, that's anywhere between nine to 18 sets total for the week. That's a lot of work. That's not bad at all. And what Adam's saying, like you push more on the big compound movements of the lower body, a set of barbell squats is significantly more taxing on the body than a set of a bench press, even a bench press, which is a compound movement or an overhead press. It's just that much more taxing. And so that's why it seems that way when you do the program. Well, and this person is asking for more legs and they're already, they're, they're currently tailoring their trigger and focus sessions around glute and hams. You're getting a lot of leg work. Yeah. I think you're okay. Yeah. I think you're, I think you're just, I think you're just, you're just fine. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of work if you are if, cause focus sessions are the, other days in the week. So if you're running your foundational days, it's like five or six days a week. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's plenty of that's plenty of volume and I frequency. Think, for I, most I think people. this is an example of, and and I'm definitely and I'm not picking on whoever this is. Like I'm, this isn't me picking on you because I was the same way here. Where if I wasn't like sore, really sore from that training session, you know, then it wasn't good enough, or I could have done more. And yeah. more does not always result in more results. Uh, this is one of the things that we're constantly trying to drill into people's head that you are always trying to do as little work as possible to elicit the most amount of change. It's not the more I do, the faster I get there. 
That is the biggest mistake I think most people make, especially more advanced lifters who love to work and love to go to the gym. These are the ones that want more, want more, want more, and they they're seeking that that soreness out. You know, so I'm assuming that this is more of an advanced person who's lifting that is wanting more. And it's, you know, you get, that's one of the hardest things mm-hmm. I deal with still today. Still today, I overreach all the time mm-hmm. because I too like that or it makes me feel like I did way more work if I feel that soreness. And you did do way more work, but you did more work than you needed to do. That's right. And, you know, here's the other thing that you want to consider that we always, always, always encourage any of our program users. Just modify the outcome. Yeah, the first time you go through it, just do it as it's laid out, especially if you're new, but do it exactly as we laid out. Try it out. Follow the program. The second time through, modify. Start listening to your body. Oh, that exercise didn't really work well for me. I want to try this one instead. Or I'm not working out enough legs. Throw in some more leg stuff. You can totally do that. Totally up to you. I would just, this person, like you said, follow it to a T. The second time around, if you didn't feel like it's enough, I would just slightly increase volume by adding one set. Add one set to all your leg exercises now for the week. You know, so which now, is plenty. Yeah, that's a lot. Now mm-hmm. you just all of a sudden increased another four to eight, you know, sets or more. We're talking about nine. If you're doing nine to twelve, you're getting, you know, significantly more just by adding one set to every mm-hmm. leg exercise you do. What's the highest amount of volume that you guys have ever hit, or frequency and volume with body parts? You guys are when you were competing. I'd yeah, be- I was up in I was up in the thirties. It's like thirty sets a week for yeah. a body part. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I was up there. Um, and I don't. That was the, that was what I tracked too. I've maybe I've may have have even peaked over that. Um, and we're talking. I'm coming back to the gym twice. So I was running kind of like a split routine. If you look at my entire journey from when I first started documenting it on Instagram, when I was uh, had it got fat, when I was 20 percent body fat, and then I started to go all the way down, leaned out first. When I was leaning out, I was, and this was when you and I were talking way back then. I was following a structure like Maps and a Ball. This was even before we had got together, and I was starting to start my fat loss journey. But I was only training in the gym, you know, three days a week. I was training a full body type of routine. Uh, the volume was very moderate to low for what I know I was capable of done in the past. And then if then I scaled to like a Maps aesthetic. And then I scaled to like a map split. And then I even went beyond probably a map split, which were I, some of the days I was coming in and doing uh, a, a double split where I come back mm-hmm. and I would, if there was areas that I was trying to develop after a show, I would come back and I would be touching up on mm-hmm. on those body parts to increase the volume. And when I was doing that, I was probably peaking out at 30, 30 sets, maybe even a little bit more of, of specific body parts that I was trying to, to move up. But again, the important part that, I, that people need to understand is that was a two-year process mm-hmm. of scaling volume a up. A very committed, yeah. focused work. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I was dialed. I didn't miss. Mm-hmm. I didn't miss a food. I didn't miss a, a day in the gym. I didn't miss tracking and scaling up. I mean, it was. I was very dialed in to move from the the. You know, and I know I was men's physique, so and you could tease all you want about men's bikini, but you know, <laughs> I said sh- that yesterday. Sh- yeah, right. Show me a motherfucker who doesn't care anything about that world, was isn't a bodybuilder whatsoever, dips into the amateur level and mo- moves their way all the way up to the professional. Oh, you level. got jacked. You have to be dialed in. Yeah, you got to be dialed in and consistent. And I was extremely dialed in and consistent, but I was also very smart about how I progressed myself. I most certainly did not jump in to a map split or even bigger type of. Routine. What do you think would have happened had you do that? Plateaued hard. This is an important thing to communicate because people need to know that it's not that you're doing it the way you did it because it's less work and it's easier. That's a plus. Yeah. You know, you're a hardworking person. If you thought it would have got you there faster, you would have done it, but you didn't because why? Because I know. It's not even a question of what I think. I know that I would have, it would have slowed my progress down. It Mm would have, because I'd done this in the past as a kid where, Balls to the wall and balls to the wall, sure, for the first month or two gets you pretty far, mm-hmm. especially if you weren't doing anything before. And then now you throw everything in the kitchen sink at your body, like absolutely the body will respond. It's super resilient. It will lose some body fat. It will build some muscle. It will respond to you. But then it will adapt. And what I don't want to happen, if I'm, I know I've got a long road ahead of me, I don't want it to adapt when I haven't completed building this ultimate physique I'm trying to build, and I knew that I was competing, if that, and, and whatever, if I was just a normal trainer and didn't, I wasn't being judged and getting up on stage and presenting myself, maybe I, maybe I would, wouldn't care so much about being very smart about how I slowly progressed my volume, 
but I was. I was getting on stage and I was being, I'm having to present this and I had to time it. So I had to be very smart and mathematical about my approach. And I knew that if I came out and gave everything out, I would have nowhere to go. I wouldn't have any variables to play with. I was I was just talking about that with uh, with Jessica this morning. We were going for a walk and and it's funny because if I take this analogy and I use it on something else, sometimes people will, if I make an analogy be, analogy with something different, but similar, I think sometimes people get it. It's, it's, for example, let's say you're all of a sudden like, hey, I want to start making money uh, invest in investments. So you just take a bunch of money and you just throw it all right. at a bunch it's of- It's a great analogy. And not know what you're doing. Just, I'm just going to throw it all at everything. The odds that you're going to lose everything are, are quite high. You want to sit down, you want to learn, you want to take your time, slowly build up your assets, whatever, and that's a successful strategy. And be consistent, right? It's very similar with fitness. And it's not part of it's because you don't know what you're doing, but the other part of it is your body just doesn't respond that way. You go in there and throw everything at it all at once, you're not going to get there any faster. In fact, you'll get there slower. You'll actually reduce your body's well, ability to do Well, this is that. why, too, and this is a good point. I'm glad we went this way because we haven't really talked about this that often. Um, this is when we created the RGB bundle when we only had the the three main programs. The idea is that you go through all of them in the in the order. You know, you start with red, you then progress to green, you then progress to black. The next natural progression from that would be split. I mean, that's that's if you were to slowly increase volume over time, and that's a year's worth of programming and training. And if you follow that, and if you were dialed and you don't miss and you're consistent. And you know you you eat correctly, and by correctly I mean you don't go off the radar. As even if you're not perfect dialing, you still should see a very nice, very good consistent. Yeah, growth. Very, you should see consistent growth and change and and strength gains and 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 building muscle over the course of the year. And it's designed that way. And the hard part is like when we get questions like this, where you want more, you know, you you want more because you think because you can do more. Because just because you can do more doesn't necessarily Especially mean. Especially if you're a hardworking person, right? Like I know who this person is, and she. Oh, you do. I do, and she she actually interviewed me for. I think she was going to start a podcast, and she's a highly highly trained uh, pianist, performs at a very very high level. So you know she has that work ethic. So she's probably thinking, well, I'll just work harder right. to make it happen faster. Right. And that's not always the case. In this case, working harder for you is going to be being smarter about it and, and trying to combat your natural tendency to want to just Least do more. amount of work to elicit the most amount of change. That is your goal. Your goal is the not, you're, unless you're an athlete. If you're an athlete, you're trying to do more because you want to be able to sustain more because in a game- but You, you still got to be smart about it. Yeah, no, I'm not saying you don't be smart about it, but I mean, there, there's, a, there's a, a major, there's a total different approach to programming and training when training to be resilient as an athlete than when you're trying to build and sculpt a body. It's totally different. And so the mindset has to be different. And so if you have a lot of discipline, if you have an athletic background, this is challenging. Because when I would go into the gym, I have an athletic background. I am very disciplined. I, I do too want to do more. And many times I overreach. So I was constantly having to have this conversation with myself, you know, and of pull back. I didn't need to do that. That was too much. Less sometimes, less is more sometimes, and that and that isn't for everybody. So I, you know, who I'm talking to, I have to be careful of the message. If I'm talking to the lazy guy who never wants to get to the gym and yeah, struggles, more is better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and struggles with finishing a set and quits halfway through their workout. Well, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person who likes to work out, likes to push, sets goals, likes to you know, and wants to put more effort towards everything. Those are the ones that have to be careful. Those are the ones that be, need to be constantly reminding themselves that less is more or the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change. Next question is from Bayer. You guys always talk about how squatting and deadlifting are skills that need to be practiced and mastered. Can you talk about the cues and techniques required to perform a proper bench press? Oh, man. You know, it took me a long time to realize that the bench press was extremely technical. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely a skill to learn and acquire, and that took me a while, too. And I'd, I mean, for me, it was really like uh, shadowing uh, some power lifters and, like, watching their technique and, and seeing, like, how they really, like, emphasize that retraction of the shoulders and, and then also utilizing the ground forces with their legs and getting their entire body involved in that lift was like, okay, this is a totally different thing. You're, so what you're, what you're referring to, and this is for the listeners who don't understand, when you, so power lifters are the best, best bench pressers in the world, um, and that's because that's their sport. It's part of their, one of the lifts that they have to do. 
So if you want to learn how to bench press really well, or at least get a lot of weight up with your bench press, um, then you want to watch power lifters. And something that they used to communicate all the time that took me so long, I dismissed it. I used to dismiss it. And then it took me so long to understand was they would say, Use leg drive. Yeah. I, I, I would think to myself, like, leg drive? Like, this is an upper body exercise. Yeah, what the fuck am I doing with my legs? I'm pressing with my arms. My legs aren't doing anything. Then I was working out with a power lifter buddy of mine, and he kept telling me, you need to use leg drive. And I'm like, explain that to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. He says, okay. He says, take your right hand, and he says, now I want you to keep your entire body relaxed, including your face, and now squeeze your right hand as, as hard as you can, but keep everything else relaxed. And then he says, now try that again, but this time tense up your whole body along with yeah. it. He goes, which squeeze felt stronger? Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, obviously, it's when I squeezed up my whole body. In fact, when you're tensing up something, you'll notice that you'll naturally tense up your whole body to amp up your this CNS. This is the principle or the law or whatever of irradiation. And this is what, uh, I mean, it's a hard concept to kind of grasp right away. It's really a feel thing. And it's just like Sal's describing. Like, you're just so much stronger once you can incorporate uh, more surrounding muscles to get involved into any sort of lift or movement. And that takes uh, discipline. That takes technique and skill uh, to learn that process and, and not just like, and, and I think that um, there's, there's a big drop off or, or like there's, it's a hard thing to kind of adopt right away for somebody who's done a lot of isolated uh, work and, and has worked on like bodybuilding and has tried to kind of work and sculpt their body uh, to, to be able to generate like a, a massive amount of force and, and direct it properly. Yeah. So here's a few cues for the bench press, just a, f a few basic ones. Keep your feet on the floor first, because that's what we're talking about, leg drive. When you lay back, your lower back is not going to be on the bench. It's going to have a, a natural curve. You want to maintain that or even exaggerate that. I remember when I first became a trainer, some other trainers would tell me that you don't want that. No, no, keep the back flat. Right. It protects their back. Worst possible thing you could do because when you flatten your lower back, the shoulders roll forward, you put your shoulders in a position that's not beneficial and actually can increase your risk of injury. So you want this nice arch in your lower back, but your butt stays on the bench. So right. it's not lifting your butt off the bench. It's just your lower back arch. Uh, and is, you're still is bracing, so it's not yes. like your abs aren't involved, you know. You still can brace and, and utilize, you know, your your abs and your core strength uh, in the lift as well. That's and right. You're, and you're not really thinking about arching your back. You're thinking more about retracting your shoulders. It'll naturally arch your back right, when you do right, that. Right, like yeah. if, now, to, power lifters do try to arch their back. Yeah, because they're trying to create the most leverage as yeah, possible. But yeah. as, a, as a normal person who's just trying to bench press and get gains on their, on their bench press and, and see their chest grow, like... If the thing that I think I have put the most emphasis on, in fact, it's a staple thing that I do before I bench always. It's what I teach others to do is I love like band pull aparts or I'll, mm. or if I'm like at, at the gym and I don't Great have a primer for yes, bench. band pull aparts or doing just the barbell row a bunch of times. I'll do it like 20 times and really get that retracting. The she'll wake up all those muscles that are responsible for holding your shoulders back. Because if we are, you got to think of your, the body, right? So most people are already naturally in this forward shoulder, rounded position because of everything that we do. So then if you get into a bench press that a lot of things are going on, Sal, and everyone's telling you drive through, drive through your legs, arch your back, you know, pull the shoulder, you have a lot of stuff you're trying to communicate to, and you have your natural position your body wants to go to, and you're also pressing, it's really hard to fight that, to keep the shoulders peeled back. So in my opinion, this is one of the biggest things that help people out is to teach them to retract and really, really retract. And so priming that before going into a, be a bench press, I think is essential. Well, I mean, and it's so crucial because like retracting, that's part of the process of really stabilizing the shoulder mm -hmm. joint. And stabilizing the shoulder joint is essential for you to be able to generate more force to be able to apply towards the lift. And if you if 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 there's any point in that lift where there's a shakiness, there's there's a there's like left to right, there's things that your shoulder aren't really like uh properly like bracing and stabilizing, your body's not gonna be able to uh, you know, exert as much yeah, force. Here, I remember the first time I learned how to bench press th through my personal training certification. Now, I had bench press before this, but then I took the certification, and they actually taught us that the elbows need to be out at 90 degrees 
and don't bend them beyond 90 degrees. Oh, yeah. So elbows flared out, <laughs> elbows flared out, and don't go all the way down. Oh, God. Worst. Uh, old school. Worst advice of all time. And then with your feet up on the bench. Yeah. No, they didn't say that. <laughs> thank God. Remember that Gosh. movement? Everybody put their feet on the bench? Yeah, because it protects. Because we've got to keep back. our backs flat. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible, terrible yeah. advice. You want the elbows to tuck a little bit. So you don't want them in at your sides completely, but you don't want them flared out either. There's a slight tuck, and you're staying very, very tight with your with your body. You're, t- you're bracing your core. You're driving into the floor with your legs, but your butt doesn't come off the bench. You're, you're tightening your lats, squeezing your shoulder blades down and back, and you're coming down, and you're coming right below nipple line and then pressing up. And, and that tension alone, that position alone, if you master that, should add – some weight to your bench press if you're not already doing those things. Literally, you can yeah. you can increase your bench press by five to ten pounds just by doing uh, proper yeah, technique. and then just little tweaks from there. You know, you grip the bar a certain way where you're kind of pulling outward a little bit. I found has helped quite a bit. There's just little. We know, did a, we did a great uh, tutorial video with Ben Pollock. He did a great. This was one of his oh, lo- right. his longer ones that he did, and he did his whole bench press setup. And I think yeah, he touches. We should on, put that in the notes. Yeah, yeah he, he does he, a good job. Yeah, he does a really good job on that for someone that's looking for more detailed information. I know a lot of the trolls on YouTube they want just a quick show me the extra size don't teach me mm-hmm. but this is more of a tutorial so this someone who's seeking this information will appreciate it but for me I, if you've never primed your back correctly before doing a bench press I, i'll show you a change in difference right then and there like for, for right away if you have not yep. done that do ba- do 15 to 20 band pull aparts grab the barbell the 45 pound barbell since you're right there at the bench anyways row it like 15 to 20 times maybe do that two sets of that and then get under and and get into your bench press and tell me how you feel and i promise you like you will you will feel a difference because i think the most common thing is the the roll it's hard not to roll the shoulders you're pushing yeah, you just you're, want to get the bar off yeah. you yeah it's the the body's natural thing when you were are to push the body forward is the shoulders to also come forward and to, in it, to exaggerate or add to that you're, most people all suffer from upper cross syndrome where they have the forward shoulders anyway. So, so they're already in a bad position yeah, so going in. It takes, yeah. a, it, or it's taken me personally and anyone I've ever trained, a, it takes a lot of mental focus to really be able to lock those shoulders back, to, to retract and depress them down and hold them in that fixed position while you're pressing. And when you learn to do that, I think that you'll generate a lot more power. It should feel smoother. So try that if you have not done that. And again, that also gives you a little taste of what MAPS Prime is all about. I mean, this is what... Oh, dude, if you do MAPS Prime and you prime properly before you bench, you can expect to see a difference yeah, immediately. Yeah, that's already going to be a performance increase. Well, this is what I, I mean. And we talk about as far as the thing that we were probably... All the programs we did, this one is the one that we were the most proud of because this is what we did. We went around and we thought about, okay, what are the most common issues that you know clients have struggled with or that we've dealt with? What are the moves that are most complementary to the movement or exercises they're going to do? Now let's teach them how to prime. Well, it them. benefits all pursuits, you yeah. know, even if it's therapeutic or if you're, if you're trying to increase your performance, like all these pursuits, like you need to learn uh, this process. Mm. And you know, one of the things I love about our forum so much is there's so many discussions that go on in that forum about stuff like this. Like you, like there's you can literally go on the forum. There's power lifters there. And you could talk about advanced techniques on how to improve your bench press. Um, and, you know, we're talking about basic setup, right? Skills and, and techniques. And I think you should master practicing the bench press. Here's the lifts I think you should practice. Squats, deadlifts, overhead presses. And I, I would even throw bench presses out there. I think those are oh, good exercises. Abso- to, bench press, absolutely. Just to practice. Absolutely. that goes. I mean, I think of... The bench press is, you know, you could argue overhead press or bench press is the the squat of the upper body. Right. There, you have a lot of moving parts going on and a lot of different areas that you got to be kind of thinking about. That's what makes the squat so difficult. When you drop into a squat, it's like the the feet, your ankles, your knee travel, your hips, like you, your core being tight. There's so much to think about. It's such a complicated move that it does it does require a lot of practice to execute well. The bench press isn't far off. I mean, for the upper body, a lot of people don't think that though. A lot of people think, oh, bench press just push the bar up. No, no, no. It's a technical movement. It took me a long time to realize that, and once I realized that. My bench press numbers oh, went it up. It took me mm-hmm. well over a decade before I became, uh, and I don't think I'm good. I think for a, a six foot three guy with long ass arms, I think I'm a pretty good uh, bench presser considering. But it took me a long time. I mean, that was one of my week. I had as a kid. I, I've told the story before. We 
bench press. This was one of the first moves that I had to practice and get better at. I couldn't even do the bar, couldn't even do 45 pounds. One friend would have to push my shoulders down where the other friend balanced and kept the bar even. I also had uh, one chest was much bigger than the other. It wasn't big. One was much flatter than the other, right? Mm. One was a like concave, <laughs> and the other one was flat. You had that oblong chest. You no, know, I, was, I was all fucked up, man. I was definitely fucked up, and it took me a very long time to balance that out, to learn how to bench press. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say until the last five years, mm. maybe a little more than that, to have I gotten really good at the movement. Mm. Next question is from Blackburn7171. If you were a professional wrestler... What would your name be, and what this gimmicks like a, would you use? Such a Justin question. <laughs> <laughs> pick this yeah, question. Course, I don't even see. I yes, know. I knew that. Snuck that one in on we you should guys. Pick, we should pick names for each other. Yeah. That's what we should do. I, no, I, 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 I'll start because like I throw that dude. I was thinking about this, and I'm like, how funny and awesome would it be to be like. The heavy meddler, he meddles. Oh my God. You know, and he comes no. out. And I, go, and I, go, like, I was thinking like the yeah. cheese, the cheese crusher. The, and what? Here the comes cheese up. crusher, the cheese crusher. <laughs> that's, his, yeah. that's his. That's his move. Yeah. yeah. The name of, but his name is Gluteus Maximus. Yeah. He comes, oh, like, uh, Gluteus Maximus, and he's got like yeah. a, he's got like a crown. You will gas and everyone. Came, <laughs> he comes gas. out. Yeah. Like I, Sal would be like the, Sal would be gas the professor. In. He's already got that nickname. So the professor, you would come yeah. out with like a lab coat and right. some like glasses. Some glasses you'd in, be yeah. like, and a ruler. That would be like your secret. No, you'd movie. have that that one sport coat where it has the patches on the elbows. The, the tweed you know? one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the <tweed laughs> Adam, Adam would, Here's today's <laughs> lesson: ass kicking. Adam yeah. would wear this. Adam would wear like the tight trunks, and he'd be sexy Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> sexy Sanchez. <laughs> he'd come out. Do you like, guys remember the wrestler? Like, bro, no, I feel like he'd be the guy with the mirror. Yeah, was the guy? Yeah, the guy yeah. with the mirror that came out and was all like, "Yeah, Mr. Perfect, yeah, Mr. Perfect, Mr. Perfect." Yeah, Mr. Yeah, perfect. Like, oh, yeah. No, no, you're he's more Looking ravishing Rick Rude. Yeah, dude, yeah. you're ravishing Rick Rude, bro. Do you remember what he would do at the end of his, uh, his his sets or whatever? He would do some with his hair, wouldn't he? And he would. What would he he would wrestle, and then he would ask a lucky lady from the audience to come up, and then he'd like kiss him or something like that. Yeah, right. Wasn't that what he would do? He, <laughs> was, he would fix his hair and he'd kiss him. He did something like that. That was funny. Okay, yeah. that's that good. was hilarious. So, good. what'd you say? What'd you sexy Sanchez? Sexy Sanchez. And the, the professor. Yeah, and and then the cheesinator. What no, do we call no, him? he's, a, oh, he's the gluteus maximus. The gluteus maximus. He's gluteus maximus. And maximus. your special and your special move is the the, the cheese, cheese crusher. The cheese crusher. Yeah, what's my special mm. move? Your special move is the the lesson. The- <laughs> and Sal today's just, lesson. Today just Sal just gave the lesson. <laughs> oh shit, he's about to drop the lesson. <laughs> yeah. you guys, who are your From favorite? The high ropes. Who are your favorite wrestlers of the, back in the ultimate day? Ultimate Warrior, of course. Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, Besides Ultimate Warrior, Ultimate Warrior. Awesome. I was the Ultimate Warrior. I was for Halloween. I'm like I like. Jake the Snake. I liked um ah, fuck. I like Bret Hart. I, I like the Grave not Grave Digger. That's a that's monster a, that's truck. A monster. <laughs> <laughs> You're mixing up your Undertaker. Grave. Undertaker. That's yeah, right. I like the, yeah, I like Undertaker. the Undertaker too. Do you guys, that guy's badass. Do you guys remember Brutus the Barber Beefcake? I loved Brutus. Remember that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would after he'd beat someone, he'd fuck up their hair yeah. with scissors. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> he like beat him up. You know, uh, imagine if you did that in real life. Like after you beat someone, I would never lose. You know what? You know, I think the best shit talker was Ric Flair, though. That guy. Hey, you yeah. know what we're gonna Woo! do? Boo! You know what we're gonna do? Yeah, there's a really good documentary on him. Yeah. Uh, you know how I just did this recently in our all staff meeting where I I gave everybody the no, name, you're not. name of the Warriors. We should do it for WWE. Like, I'm putting wrestlers? that on you. Oh shit! All right, I yeah, got you. you should know your yeah. wrestlers well enough. I think you should be able to name everybody. Yeah. So Somewhat. I last meeting I brought all the. Okay, I'll, I'll bring that in. Yeah, I'll be the next I brought meeting. I brought all the the, yeah. the Warriors players for everybody. Remember the British Bulldog? That guy was jacked. He was yeah. one of the buffest uh, uh, wrestlers oh, yeah. that were out there. It was Sergeant him. Slaughter. Sergeant. He, made it, he made his way over to uh, GI Joe. Who were he did? Yeah. Who were the guys that the the weird twins that would lick each other's heads? Bushwhackers. Uh, oh, Bushwhackers. Bushwhack twig. Yeah. The Bushwhackers. Yes, and they were running. Yeah, exactly. Yes. They Maybe they I mosh. should do this. I know. Yeah, all they were like rivals. moshing with yeah, their. Yeah. I might have watched yeah. more WWF than you then. I don't yeah. think so. I watched Hacksaw a lot. Jim Duggan. Did. I mean, yeah. yeah. What's up, two Jim by four? Big Boss Man. Big Boss Man was great. Yeah. He was really good. Let I watched think. it up until it was okay. like. Who's this? X Pac and all those guys, you know, with the WCW. Oh, no. I was in 80s and early 90s. I watched it up until then. Did you really? Yeah. Who's this guy? Remember this guy? He come out, Coco beware, bro. Oh you yeah, remember, remember yeah. it? And the gold, junkyard, gold dust, junkyard dog. Yeah, junkyard, junkyard dog, dog was, was out. My Yokozuna. Yeah. The earthquake. Yeah. Oh man, I got you guys on this, man. I was a huge <laughs> fan back then. Yeah, I was only when I was a kid. Did yeah. you guys ever go? I went. Like I went to them. No. 
What, that was actually. Are they fun? That's when I. Yeah, they're crazy. Do we went one time with oh, Gregor yeah. oh, and yeah, he, right. he yeah. farted and yeah. cleared yeah. the entire balcony. Yeah. He killed the whole arena. Yeah. He, he, he literally destroyed. Well, we went as adults, right? So that was I hadn't been since I was a kid. That was yeah, that, that was, was a, a different experience. couple two years ago. I think yeah. I was when I surprised you guys with that, right? That was yeah. I hadn't been since I was a kid. What I was so fascinated in when I when we all went was the production of it business wise. I mean what it was I a did, marketing uh, machine. Well yeah. what I didn't know they did, which is fucking duh, brilliant. And how brilliant for like Pepsi and KFC and everything like that. They have their own commercials that nobody else sees. Yeah. You watch normal TV, you don't see these commercials. It's specifically made for the audience there. On their big screen. Yeah, you got you got yeah, thirty thousand fans that see a KFC commercial, but of course in the KFC commercial it's all the wrestlers. Mm-hmm. So the wrestlers I'm sure got paid to do these commercials, but what a smart Smart Dude, way to market so awesome. its own little ecosystem. It was a, it was like it was a like a six hour production, and it was like half of it was commercials. Do you, to you. Do you yeah. guys remember in the? I think it was like the late eighties or early nineties when John Stossel. Remember he used to uh, do those investigative reports where he would try and like reveal people like oh you're fake or whatever. He went behind the scenes at pro wrestling and he mm. did a whole show on is pro wrestling fake. What people don't know is today people know it's not real. I mean the the hits and the throws and stuff are real, but it's not they're not really fighting each other. Yeah. But back then it was a secret. Like it was Oh, a, like people didn't realize you that. You didn't know that? Oh bro, back then How could you not know? Back then it was like you know, people knew but but they never admitted it, they never talked about it. Like That's funny. now people talk about it, but it was this big like no no. Yeah. So he goes backstage and I don't remember who it was, Diamond Dallas Page, I think it was. Oh uh, yeah. And he interviews him, he goes, So is wrestling fake? You know, we think wrestling's fake. Is it fake? And and Diamond Dallas Page, I think that's what it was, turned around and he's like, Is this fake? And he fucking blasts him, like hits him in the side <laughs> of the head. Katoosh! And then he gets up and he hits him again. Is this fake? Katoosh! And he had a huge lawsuit. You never saw that? No. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, that's John Stossel hilarious. got blasted that's by this hilarious. six foot eight freaking monster. Yeah. Oh, they slapped the shit out of each other. That's, I mean, that's, that's what he was saying. He's like, Is this fake? And yeah. Like, ah! And they jump <laughs> off like, dude, like three story high cages and do crazy shit. Somebody. It's, Dangerous as hell. Somebody who loves this would love. So I I read Bret Hart's uh, biography, and that thing is, I mean, it's like a Bible for wrestling. It's it was. Oh yeah, the whole Hart family. Probably, right? I think yeah. it's actually the biggest book that I've ever, I've ever and, read. Yeah. You know, there's and a it, whole it goes, culture. Oh yeah, no, it goes into the history of it, and then the Hart family is actually the beginning of all of it. Yeah. I didn't know that until I read oh. the the biography. Like his his dad, and it's you been, guys should listen to Billy Corgan on Joe Rogan. He he's actually an investor in that whole like business. Oh, He's yeah. big into it. Yep, there he is when he gets blasted. Look, watch this. He's like, is this fake? Watch. Oh, is this fake? <laughs> Boom! Oh! <laughs> oh, shit. He like runs away. Ah! <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh there's a there's a cult <laughs> there's a whole culture around around oh. the sport. Oh, it's oh, amazing. Yeah. You have to go watch it. We're like you have to you have to say certain things, you have to be a particular way. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Have you heard the story of Hulk Hogan and how he got into wrestling or whatever? So he tried to get into it over and over again, and he went to some Japanese pro wrestling school because I guess they have a long history Dude, of pro wrestling. I forgot how big he is because he just looks kind of like he's a regular. He's I massive. Mean, he's, he's a big guy, but like I didn't know how tall. Like He's like, what, like 6'8"? Six, 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 he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's a giant. Six, seven, six, he's eight. a giant. But he looks small when he'd be like next to Andre the Giant. Well, that's what I mean. He looks small compared to these other guys. So he went and did it because Japan has a long history of pro wrestling also. So he went to this Japanese school and he's like, I want to learn, I want to learn or whatever. And I guess the instructor finally is like, fine, come on in. And to teach him a lesson, he broke his ankle. He broke Hulk Hogan's ankle, got him an ankle lock and broke it. Hulk came back to the school with a broken ankle. Continuing, continuing to want to train, and then, then he gained his respect, mm. and then he came on board, and then, of course, he became most popular wrestler of all time. So That's good. pretty cool. Holster. Cool. There you go. And with that, That's look. That's right, brother. Go to ma- uh, mindpumpfree.com. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Just go check out and see what we have for free. I'm not even going to tell you. It's a secret. There's a bunch of free stuff on there. Go check it out. Also, if you want to find us on Instagram... Let's say you want to DM Justin yeah. uh, some pictures of yourself, and you please, want him to please do give you a, a give you advice on how you look. Wow, dude! You can hey. do that on Instagram. Uh, his, his page it's is totally an option. Mind Pump Justin. You can find my page at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. 
The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.